number 42 in your hymnal, four, two, saved by the blood of the crucified one. Number four, two, let's all stand together as we sing, saved by the blood. On that first together, saved by the blood of the crucified one, now ransom from sin and a new work begun. Sing praise to the Father and praise to the Son, saved by the blood of the crucified one. saved, aren't you? And, uh, man, that's good singing, and uh, good to see you in church on Sunday night, and uh, looking forward to a great service together this evening. Appreciate you being back in your place. Let's pray together, shall we? Father, we bow before you now tonight. We thank you for another Sunday evening service that you brought us to. We're thankful, Lord, for the blessings of the morning hour and for decisions that were made. That Lord, we're back for more this evening. We're needy people, and we need you to meet with us again tonight. Thank you that we're saved, and we're saved by the blood of your precious Son, Jesus Christ. We're so glad that we're saved, and our sins are forgiven, and then our guilt is all gone. And Lord, I pray that your hand will be upon our service now tonight, that it'll be exactly what you would want it to be. Our hearts would be open to what you would want to say to each of us, and Lord, use it in every heart and life of the ones who made the effort to be here on a Sunday evening. Lord, please meet with us and may your will be accomplished i pray in jesus name amen. amen all right you may be seated 341 in your hymnal 341 i heard an old old story how a savior came from glory let's sing that first together i heard an old Yeah. 
shouting out sold after he sought me and he bought me all right and then obviously we do the praise god too at the uh later on let's all uh, try our best just shout out sold after he sought me and bought me all right let's sing that last together i heard about a mansion he had built for me in glory i heard about a mansion change things up just a little bit. I want to go ahead and have the choir sing now, all right? So let's just jump right into that, and uh, then we'll come back after the next song, and we'll give the announcements and talk a little bit about yesterday, all right? So let's hear from the choir.
294. You want to sing again? Okay. All right, 294. My faith has found a resting place, not in device nor creed. No other plea. Let's sing that first together. My faith has found a resting place. third my heart is leaning on the word the written word of god salvation by my savior thing salvation through his blood i need no other argument i need no other plea it is enough Take care of some business, all right? Good to. Um, first of all, we have a couple anniversaries to celebrate, all right? John and Carol Coleman uh, had an anniversary on May 11th, is that right? And uh, they celebrated their anniversary, and Andy and Nikki Slayball celebrated their anniversary. So come on up, you happy couples. We'll celebrate an anniversary with you. Now, I think we'll take just a minute, and let's welcome our guests that are with us tonight. Uh, gentlemen, right back here, stand up for us, Brother Ford. This is Brother Ford with Bearing Precious Seed, and uh, he's kind of a newcomer there. He's only been doing it 39 and a half years, and uh, faithful man of God, and uh, what a blessing to meet him finally in person. I've only seen his picture, and... Uh, and it wasn't at the post office, Brother Ford. And uh, it was a <laughs> blessing to have him here. He's preaching up north and on his way back down to, to Milford uh, this evening. And he stopped in to be in our church service. And uh, thank you so much, Brother Ford. God bless you. Thank you for being here. And uh, let's see. Jason, you got some? 
You brought your whole family. Introduce them to us, okay? Introduce your family to us, all right? Okay. Okay, great, great. And this lady next to you? <laughs> Don't leave her out, okay? That's important, all right? <clears throat> That's Heather's mom and Jeannie's mom, all right? And uh, I met her at the... That's great. That's great. You can help them get those cards filled out if you would. And a uh, little bit when we have the offering, you just put the card in the plate if you would. And keep the pen as our gift for you for coming. All right? Let's give them all a warm welcome, shall we? All right. <clears throat> now, we'll uh, talk a little bit about yesterday, okay? And uh, great, great day that uh, the Lord gave us. And um, Tuesday night, oh, we'll, we'll go out and make some visits, all right? And um, this is what we had from yesterday. There's 185 cards here of folks who filled out a card and uh, contact cards. So we've got plenty to do and uh, in the next few weeks to get back and uh, thank these folks for coming and uh, being here uh, at the country fair. I'm going to uh, see if I can play something for you. If this phone will work in here, I hope it will. Hold on. Okay. Message. Message from three zero four four. Where's this coming out of there? Seven zero one three. Received today at one eleven p.m. I just wanted to thank you guys for having your annual event yesterday it, for the community. It was absolutely fantastic. I, I'm just blown away by your generosity to Grove City. So I just wanted to thank you guys so much for having it and just believing with you guys that you touched many lives in the area. Thank you again. Have a good day. That was a phone call today. Wasn't that good? So I wanted you to hear that, and uh, that's, a, that's a blessing. And uh, wonderful, wonderful day. Anybody uh, just want to open it up? You want to give a testimony or uh, just say something how the Lord uh, blessed you yesterday or impacted your life? We, we want to hear about it, all right? If you have anything you want to say, just uh, put your hand up. They'll give you a microphone. Carol Coleman has it ready to go. I just want to say that I'm, I'm glad that God bl blessed us with the perfect day that we had, even though it closed us down a little bit early. Mm -hmm. But John and I loved all the children that come up to us. Matter of fact, several of them come twice or more. But we had a great time with them. That's great. Praise the Lord. That's good. Great. Yep. Okay, Leanne and then Brett. I just want to praise God and thank all of you that were there for how well it came together and we worked together and served the Lord. And you could feel the spirit of the Lord moving yesterday throughout the whole fair. And I just want to say that it was a marvelous day. We did a wonderful job. Amen. Good. Next. All right. Brett Linke. First, I want to say thank you to all those who gave. Amen. This was the first Sunday, Saturday, excuse me, yeah. that we were able to run our bus. Yeah. Amen. And I told Brother <laughs> Bill, I said, you know, we've, we've had a couple of uh, rentals, and we're thankful for those. We were able to work out some kinks on the route and such, and how to effectively run it and such. We're still working on that. And... Uh, but any case, so we went out and we, we picked up a mess of kids, about 37 on the first load. Mm -hmm. And he said, so what do you want to do? I said, let's go out again. Amen. So we went out and got some more. And there was, a, there was a lady shelter calling and calling and calling and calling. And they said, well, we got about 10 people standing out here waiting for you. So whenever you decide to get here, I said, well, we'll be there. Just give me, let me drop these off. We'll be there. And about 20 ladies came on that bus, that one yeah. stop. And then we went and picked up. We had about 26 on the second load. And I got looking, and I said, Bill, I bet we could run a third time. He said, you want to go? Let's do it. And about that time, it started to rain a bit, and I said, nah, I think we better get back and pick everyone up and get out of here. But um, I'm very humbled 
how short a time we've been here. Yeah, amen. And how much that people believed in us, believed in this work, gave for we to have a bus. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Brett. Amen. Amen. It was wonderful. Wonderful job. Uh, would I be allowed to put in a prayer request? Sure. Okay. Um, my oldest son, Chuck, my children's, well, he's the oldest. Okay. Um, he has a lot of problems. Um, he's an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that's kept him uh, grounded is his children. And uh, his, the mother of the, his children are, is contemplating moving them out of state. Okay. And I really fear that it's going to devastate him. Okay. Well, we'll pray so, for Chuck. I'm sorry? We will pray for him. I would really appreciate it. He's yes, gonna, he really is going to need it. Okay. Thank you very much. We will do that. We will pray for him. All right. Quentin. Oh. oh um, yeah. Um, I, I'm very humbled and I'm, I'm grateful that God chose to uh, use me uh, Friday evening. Um, I was on the bus and I met a lady who uh, was at uh, the women's shelter. And <clears throat> she said, well, I might have a couple people that'll go. I said, that's fine. So I said, well, I'll give you a couple of flyers. She said, no, give me a few more. <laughs> okay, here you go. Um, but I didn't know that um, that was a divine appointment from God because from the reports that I've heard now, half of those women that were here uh, from the Van Buren yeah, they got saved mm -hmm. yesterday, so yeah. it was it was a divine appointment. So I'm, I'm very humbled by that, and I'm glad that I was in the right place and I was obedient at that time. So I'm very grateful for that. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Anthony, I was just gonna say that um, Saturday, me and my mom had a lot of trouble to actually get to the fair, the country fair, and me. And her, we were like going back and forth from like, like what area, I mean what transportation, and me and my mom were like, felt bad and upset about it because we felt like it was our fault that having people like run back and forth waiting, mm -hmm. and all that. But the, when when I got there, I was surprised for how many people that that were there, mm -hmm. and showed up. Even when it kept on, it said we were going to have a severe thunderstorm. I was surprised that people, that many people came. Yeah. And I'm just going to finish this off saying that I really, I got soaked. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. <laughs> you stayed. What a. <laughs> he is one of the ones that was in the dunk tank all day. And uh, so wh who cares what rains? I mean, right. you're wet anyway, you know, but uh, that was a great job. And uh, several of the guys got wet most of the day, Gage and Anthony and Aaron Anderson and other guys just got wet all the time. So uh, appreciate their participation. All right. Yes. Brenda Schroyer and then Miss Slayball. Uh, I'm thankful that I was able to come to the country fair yesterday. Um, my husband uh, is in a nursing home, and he watches you guys on live stream, and he heard you make the announcement. Mm -hmm. So he told me about it, and I called the church and got it right here. Mm -hmm. It took a while, but I got it right here. And I'm thankful that I got to come because that got me back in church. And I came this morning, and I'm back here tonight. Good. And with God's will, I'm going to be coming every time the door is open. That's open's. great, friend. Amen. And I'm just Good. thankful to God for everything he's doing for me. Uh, he's brought me out of a lot of depression and uh, health problems, and he's getting me back on my feet. And uh, I just thank the church for their support and prayers, and um, I'm just grateful for everything Amen. Uh, that God and the church has done for me. Good, good. God bless you. That's great. <laughs> Kathy? I just want to thank the Lord. I was just... Um, amazed at all he did for us yesterday. I know um, it was so neat to meet here yesterday at 9 o'clock and, and just hear your message, you know, about our words and how much they mean to people. And then um, just to break up into prayer groups and then to pray and to see the answered prayer because the weather reports weren't good, <laughs> you know. And we just, all of us, just prayed for the, the rain to hold off. 
And um, I know at the hot dog stand, you were watching the radar and you were saying, hey, it looks like it's going north. It's not coming through here. And that was like at noon. And we were just praising the Lord for that. It was a wonderful day. It was such a blessing to my heart to see all the efforts of so many people who've passed out flyers and worked so hard. And then to see all these people just, they just kept coming and kept coming. And we'd look over at Wedgwood Pizza and flooded with cars along there. And then over at Kirk, I mean, it was just, it was so amazing. And the people, the lives that we were able to touch and just to show them God's love and so amazing. Just thank mm-hmm. the Lord for that opportunity. And then, I know I don't want to go long, but <laughs> I was just, you know, to walk around and what a wonderful church we have Amen. you know just servants people i mean sweating and just happily cotton candy here here's your cotton candy here's your popcorn i i, I was trying to relieve people and i they wouldn't even nope i found my niche it's good and i'm like oh let me just give you a break no i'm fine <laughs> like okay it was amazing people loving what they're doing and just serving the lord and Amen. it was it was a wonderful day. Amen. I just thank the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Heather Joy? Um, I just want to say, um, without trying to cry, it was just kind of um, amazing how things just kind of worked itself out. Um, Lindy's in the nursery, but we were both concerned about our health issues and mobility. And I went over to help her because of her wrist and, you know, and stuff, and her back, and then I was having trouble with my stuff, and so, um, so I started doing a couple of children's faces, and they weren't really wanting to do it themselves, so she's like, you know, if you want to do it, she goes, I'll start taking pictures, and so it just kind of became a thing, and like an Mm -hmm. hour and 45 minutes later, um, Josh jumped in and started doing it, and then he, Jason, 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 sorry, I thought he said Josh, (laughs) <laughs> it was loud. By the way, the music was really loud. Yeah, she was, yeah. So, um, and then Tanya jumped in to help him. So, and then mom gave me a couple, a few minutes breaks. But it was just really amazing because even though I was trying to talk to the children one on one, it was really hard to kind of to hear them. But I was just kind of giving them a brief, um, I guess, information is not the right word, but brief, just knowledge that um, they can pray to Jesus anytime and Amen. ask him to forgive them forgive them of their sins and just real basic elementary the training that I've had and just that they can pray anytime and um, I tried to let every parent and every child that was with a parent um, and even the kids that weren't with parents know that if they wanted to ride you know the bus that they needed to call in and let the church know Mm -hmm. and and they were just very um, appreciative of that and it went really well and you know it was just um it flew by, even though by the end of the day, I was toast, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> still recovering, but it was just amazing, and then to go home and just, I, even though I was so physically tired, um, I just kind of sparked with a bunch of ideas that how we can improve it for next year mm-hmm. in, in that booth, and and um, I'm happy to do that. Great. Praise the Lord. Good. <laughs> yeah, Josh? <laughs> Jason, go uh, ahead. I just wanted to say thank you to everybody for accepting me and my family into your church. Um, we really enjoy it, and we really enjoy everybody here. I mean, it brings me, you know, just great joy to come in every day. I'm happy. Um, I wake up, and I'm like, okay, well, we, let's get up. Let's get going. I mean, we had a big rush today getting my getting the family together, getting them fed, picking up everybody who I wanted to come and see me today, and um and just thank everybody for, you know, letting me come in and jump in and just help yesterday, you know. You yeah, know, man. even though a lot of things were manned down, somebody, you guys found me something to do, and it was my little niche, and I made a lot of kids happy. And um, just talking to these kids, most of them didn't even know what we were doing here. They just knew it was a carnival. And, you know, I started talking to them. I, you know, do you speak to God? Do you talk to God? Do you pray? Hmm. You know, little things like that. And the kids were just looked at me like, what are you, what? <laughs> what? And I was like, <laughs> And I was like, yeah, you just talk to him. You just tell him, you know, how you feel. You tell him what's going on in your life, and he'll just put his hands on you, and he'll just make you get through the bad times. And, you know, you, you talk to him about the good times, too. You know, you don't just tell him your, your bad days. And this one girl told me that uh, she's going to go home and talk to him tonight. <laughs> I said, Amen. that's good. Amen. And that's, that's just good. all I want to say. All right, Jason. Thank you. Amen. Bobby Wright. 
I just, I'm going to be real specific. First, I want to thank um, Pastor for encouraging me to take the day off work. <laughs> it was a nice reminder of why we fell in love with this church Amen. several years ago and why we're back where we're Amen. supposed to be. Amen. And it helped me to make a decision that I've been praying about for a couple months now with Danny about me changing my career and uh, moving out of the club. So made that Amen. decision. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I just uh, want to praise God for uh, our, our church and um, what what can happen when we all join together uh, together. Um, you know, the guys uh, they got waterlogged there after a while, and uh, we kind of shut the the game down for a little while, and that gave me an opportunity to uh, witness to several people, and uh, what a blessing! Uh, Amen. <laughs> When you're being used by God, and you know you're you're doing His will, and a lot of times when that happens, you know, any time you're letting God's light shine and into Satan's dark world, He'll send uh, somebody to muddy up the water. And one of the uh, girls uh, said something negative uh, about me and you know it broke my heart when I first heard it but you know I got to thinking about it and I said I must have been doing something right <laughs> I must have been doing something right to uh, make Satan upset and and that's alright with me because uh, the reward I got was so much greater than uh, the wor reward he got. So that's all I wanted to say. Amen. 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 Right behind you, Bob. Emma? I got one. Um, I'm just in awe of uh, how uh, I just, like a bottle of pop struck up. I'm just in, uh, in awe of um, just looking around. I mean, I'm bending and looking, and I looked around, and I stood around, and I looked, and I seen all these people. I'm like, wow, look at this. Wow, and I'm looking over at, like she said, Wedgwoods, and these people were coming there and like trying to have places to park. I'm thinking, God, this is what you want every Sunday and every Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Why not? You know? Amen. And it's just, I just stand in awe. I mean, there wasn't many of us here, but bless God. You know, God be the glory. All these people that love God that was working together like a, a well oiled machine. We was just, <laughs> Kathy was packing the ice, and people were just. It was like, wow, like the amp you preached about. Mm -hmm. It was like, that's what we were doing. <laughs> but it was so awesome because the joy in these people's faces, you know, they came through these gates and they were so burdened. You could see in their hearts were just, there was emptiness. But, you know, to look around and say, God loves you. And they're looking at you like, really? God loves me? And I mean, it, and they seen it. We were God's hands and his feet and his words. And it just blessed Amen. me so. I just Amen. wanted to start running around and singing, praise <laughs> the Lord. And, but, you know, we praise, I praise God for you, Pastor, because mm. not every church would do this. Mm. They say free. What's free anymore? There's nothing mm. free, but there is. You know what? There's nothing we can't do with God on Amen. our side. Right. God wants to do this every time, you know. And you know what? Let's not take it for granted on special days. Let's get out there every day and say God loves you and bring him in. Amen. Because if those ten people that got saved, they touch 10 more people and 10 more people. It's just like a, it's like a good disease and it's going to spread. And, you know, those people are going to be in heaven because of what happened on these grounds yesterday. And to God be the glory, Amen. not us, to God. Because he saved an old wretched soul like us to allow us to do this. He could send angels to do this, but we are privileged. And I'm just so in awe, in awe when I look around and I think, Lord, thank you for saving yes. me and allow me to be able to see this. We were born at a time to be here to do this, and it's That's awesome. Right. Right. And I just praise him to see what's going to happen with the seeds that are planted. They're going to be watering, and you know what? It's going to be awesome. When we get to heaven, we not might see him here again, but we'll see him in heaven because something was planted in their heart yesterday that the world ain't showing them people. We've got to show them. We've got to show them God's love. And if it's a hot dog or if it's a hug or if it's a gospel track, we need to get busy because you know what? We need to roll up our sleeves, put on our boots, and hit the field because we Amen. love Jesus and we want other people too. <laughs> and I just praise his holy name for letting us do it. Woo! All right. <clears throat>
Hey, we gave out a lot of prizes Wait a minute, yesterday. we're going to have an invitation right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> we gave out a lot That's of prizes yesterday. good preaching yesterday. there, boy. Amen. And, uh, oh, yeah. And, uh, and I right. couldn't believe you guys wanted to use my crummy old grill. I couldn't right, believe Pete. it. I'm like, well, I'm glad it was, we were a help, and it was a, it was a blessing, I guess, in the end. But uh, anyway, we gave out a lot of prizes. And it was always amazing to see the young little faces. And uh, uh, we'd say, God loves you. And then, what? You don't hear that anymore. Uh, yeah, well, that's what happens here at Bible Baptist. And uh, uh, we loved everybody, and we loved uh, every minute of service. And uh, uh, it was just a great time, and, and a great time to, to be with the people of the Lord. So, um, hey. Uh, Amen. <coughs> it's such a blessing to be a member here. It's great. Thanks, Amen. Pete. Amen. Don Taylor, and then Brenda, man. All right, you know, yesterday morning before we got started working here, getting everything ready, the pastor had a short message for all the workers, and it was all about being a servant. And, you know, I, I, God had been tuning my heart as well. That morning in my journal, uh, part of my prayers, and I wrote it, you know, uh, Lord, help me to be a servant today, and, and the rest of us at Bible Baptist Church, be a servant, and, you know, what I saw yesterday, out there, I saw guys standing up there that was in great pain, the hours going on, and all the standing, and, you know, they, they was truly suffering, uh, some of them just beyond belief, they hung right in there. And uh, I thought, you know, this is not the way it was written in the Bible about suffering for the cause of Christ. I know that was the persecution of the church, but that was suffering for the cause of Christ too. And uh, I, thought of, I thought of a song, I see Jesus in you. And I saw Jesus out there on the parking lot yesterday everywhere. Yes, everywhere did. I turned around. And uh, so proud of this church. And uh, all, all I can say right now is... Wow, what in the world's going to happen next year? Lord willing, if there's next year's fair, uh, God's in it. If we go there, uh, man, I'll tell you what, anybody out there within hearing distance, if you haven't been involved, you've got to be involved. There, there is more laborers needed. <laughs> we, I saw that drastically. More at the soul winning uh, booth, uh, more everywhere. Uh, there's opportunities for everybody to... Uh, Put up rewards in heaven, and and uh, God, boy, God gets all the glory. That uh, it's just an amazing thing that I saw happen yesterday here Amen. at Bible Baptist Church, and uh, I've got an idea I'll share with the pastor. And uh, I I, th I think next year is just going to be incredible. Uh, to God be the glory for, Amen. for everybody. Amen. Amen. Brenda. Well, I've got several disorders where I'm in chronic pain, and, and ever since I've been coming here since um, December, um, I've been on the pain pills. We can't hear you, Brenda. Is it on, Bob? Yeah. I don't know. Okay, okay you got to hold it right up there. you got to get it right under the spout there, all right? There you go. I decided three weeks ago to go off of the pain medication and, and live by faith, and I'm doing really good. Amen. And it's like the tea party and then this I'm thinking okay I don't know if I can do it but I can't let the devil win you know I'm gonna I'm gonna do this I want to keep moving um, I go home and I'm in pain just like the others but I rest and I'm okay and I get up and I'm ready to go again Amen. so I Amen. praise the Lord for that it's such a Amen. blessing Amen. Uh, I have a wonderful church family I love each and every one of you you're wonderful I just never been around something like this before Amen. you guys are wonderful um, every time there's an event I have my husband help me and he was very offish about the church most of you know that well each time there's an event he has to help me and, and bring something into the um, the building over there he's staying a little bit longer mm -hmm. so <laughs> you know I'm loving this I'm loving this and your prayers that. are working miracles Amen. that's great uh, it started with I don't want to hear it don't talk to me about it I'm not interested and then it's like well I want to show you where the church is at no 
he didn't want to come in the parking lot so now he got in the parking lot he came into the fellowship hall he came up here and yesterday he stayed a little bit longer in the fellowship hall he showed up early so thank you for the prayers right. and let's keep them going because that, that's something that would mean so much to me to Amen. have him to walk Amen. with the Lord with that's me that's great so Amen. I thank the Lord I thank all of you I love each and every one thank of you thank you Brenda thank you Dave? Well, it took me a long time to get back. We were supposed to be back on Monday. Me and James went on a little trip. And I was going to get back on Monday, and I had several things I wanted to do around the church and to help pass out flyers. We were kind of doubtful we were even going to get back for Saturday. I mean, we were having real, everything was canceling, all the loads, and we weren't coming back. And Well, I got back at 3 a.m. in the morning, and James woke me up at 5. <laughs> And then uh, I stayed awake the whole day, and I was just glad to serve and to be here. And I saw how everybody just loved everybody. Amen. And the people saw it. Amen. They saw it. And just the attitude and, and everything, how it worked. And just wanting to, everybody wanted to give 100%. I saw people out there, like Donnie was saying, they were hurting. But they were giving 100% of what they had to God. And that's... I love this church. Amen. And I'm glad to be a part of it. Amen. 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 Because this is my family. Amen. I have no family. Mm -hmm. So this is my family. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Dave. Amen. Dave, Dave made the runs all day yesterday with the, the, the ice runs. And also for ketchup, mustard, more pop, more water, and uh, those kind of things. And, uh, and, and by the way, 93 of the big bags of ice. And, and, and he never would let us pay for any of it. He, he took care of all the 93 bags of ice and paid for it. So, and uh, thank you, Dave. And, uh, plus, probably a whole tank of gas, all that running he did. I don't know. That was a lot of running around. Jim Talday. I was blessed because uh, a couple of the, I used to go to church with Holland Baptist Church, John and uh, Vaughn. Mm -hmm. I was glad to see them. Blessed me to see them. Amen. And they jumped in and helped. Yep. Nobody asked for anything. Just had to help. Yeah. Oh, uh, we just they just show up and we draft them. That's what happens. And uh, <laughs> John and Ron come to our RU on Friday night, and uh, they came in, and so we uh, put them to work too. Sally. Oh, I'm just so excited. Ooh, I went to the pastor a couple times yesterday, and I said, I'm overwhelmed. What do I do? <laughs> but I just kept on signing people up. I, was, I can't believe how many people came. I looked, too, like Emma said. I thought, wow, this is my third one, third year, and this has been the biggest and the most successful that I have seen. I did not know that I could stuff <laughs> hot dogs into a bun that fast. <laughs> I never did that before, <laughs> but praise the Lord. And then Danny uh, introduced me to a gal, Brenda, was that her name, Como? And said she just accepted the Lord, and I kind of got with her, you know, and then we, she needed to go to the restroom with her baby and everything, change the baby, and so then finally I got her over with uh, Cindy. I don't know how that turned out, but I'm sure it was fine. And what a feeling, what a feeling. Sorry, I won't be here next year, but God has other plans right now, so we're just trusting him. Amen. Nicole. Well, Amber and I, we were on the snow cone machine side, and so we probably saw just about everybody that came in the fair, and I'm pretty sure our left biceps are bigger <laughs> than the other now. They were cranking but, that <laughs> ice down like that all day long, man, I tell you, wow. But I was, I think, that tickled me the most, just seeing all the different people that came through was seen all the uh, people from different cultural backgrounds that never would have stepped foot in the church just because of it being on a Sunday, but on a Saturday, they were more free to come. Several of the Hispanic families, and even I saw Somali out there, and that was so exciting because just that's an inroad right yes. there, just Amen. a connection to build on from there and go on for the future, and that, I was just so excited about that. Amen. Great. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> The just, just a couple of short stories. We were in the uh, soul winning booth, and uh, this gentleman came up, a uh, 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 black man, and he said, uh, he looked at Don, and he said, uh, do you have a broom and a, 
uh, us pan around. I mean, this this gentleman never knew us from nothing, you know. And he offered to come around, and he and we watched him, and he he filled up a whole plastic bag of, of trash, and he just went walking around the lot, just sweeping up dirt for because he was so appreciative of uh, the, the, of the love and the welcome that he seen, you know. And then we had a couple of ladies walk up to the soul winning booth, and and uh, I, they said, "What's this?" And I said, "Well, you fill out a card here, and we have a drawing every 15 minutes for a prize." And she said, "Well, I wish I could win a Bible." Well, you don't wish to win a Bible; you get one. <laughs> so Cindy, Cindy ran over to the pastor and said, uh, "This lady needs a Bible," and he went and got a Bible. And there was that other lady that was standing there with her. She just, I could see her countenance that she wanted to ask, but she didn't want to ask. And I thought, well, you know, I'm going to see what happens with this, see how the Holy Spirit works. They were going at least an hour or maybe longer. And she come back over and she said, you know, I'd like to have one of those King James Version Bibles too. I said, I said, you see that guy wearing a plaid shirt? I said, go see him. I said, yeah. he'll give you a Bible. But it was just such a blessing. You just never know what you're going to run into. But when people are hungry for the Word, we, we give it to them. And, and uh, you know, it's just two little sh stories that really Amen. bless your heart when people come up Amen. and Amen. Uh, do things like that. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Did that do it? I will. What? I will. You got one? Okay. <clears throat> I was supposed to be in the soul winning booth, and um, I don't think I made it there to stay there. Um, but I was manding the phones, and um, I don't think they stopped ringing until I just decided to leave the phone in the office. It was, it was at least 2.30. And... Uh, they were just concerned if the bus was coming and things like that and if it was what about the weather and so on and so forth so then I finally got outside and I was walking around to get people registered and and um, then I wanted to give Heather a break and um, you know there's nothing better than leaving leading somebody to the Lord you know and I felt like I hadn't really done that for a while so um, I was talking to the little girl and um, that I was doing her face with and we just went through, I planted seeds more than anything, and that's just the beginning. And so then I felt like I couldn't take her name and information. I guess I was thinking, because her mom and dad was there, so I just went over and I talked to her mom and dad, and they were believers. They were already believers, and I said, I just want you to know that we shared Jesus and sin and so on, and I said, and she said Jesus came into her heart. I said, so that's probably something mom and dad should sit down and talk to her about. So I made sure that I had a picture of her so I could pray for her. But I just walked around. It was like somebody came in. I don't know who it was and said, have you seen all the people out there? And I said, no, I've been inside. So I went out, and it was like, wow, just like everybody says. It's like, where are they all coming from? And then I looked over at Wedgwood Pizza, and I'm going, there's not any more room for any cars over there. You know, It was so incredible. And People just work together, and um, just, I don't know if we can even praise the Lord as much as we need to. It was just Amen. awesome. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Uh, Andy? Well, there's many thoughts, you know, hearing testimonies tonight that are going through my head, but the central theme that I just, I guess, I just wanted to say is he is worthy. Amen. And God is so worthy. And Amen. Amen. Everything that led up to it, the, the sacrifice of the time you spent getting out the flyers, the, the donations that came in. We don't know how many people were going to come. And we go and, you know, you go and ask for the hot dogs and the donations. And then we end up being given most of the donations mm -hmm. uh, this year. And then seeing just the testimonies of people, seeing the crowds, seeing the workers, seeing the, the cleanup and just the testimonies. And I'm just thinking, wow. Lord, you are so worthy of Amen. everything that happened that day. To God be the glory, great things he has done. Amen. Amen. That's, that's a good one to end on right there. That's great. Let's, uh, let's sing together, shall we? In fact, why don't we find to God be the glory? What number is that, Bob? And let's sing that song. Somebody grab that and give us a number, and let's sing to God be the glory, great things he hath done. 
What number is that? Four, four, five, seven, four, five, seven. To God be the glory. Let's stand together. All right, everybody's standing. Let's sing the first. We'll shake hands and we'll come back and sing the last. All right. On that verse together, to God be the glory, great things he has done. So love be the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life and Amen. Great one another. Make somebody feel welcome, especially our guests. We'll come back and sing that last stanza together. he had taught us great things he had done and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. Let's sing that last all together as you find your seats. Great things he had taught us, great things he had done and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But your attire and great said amen. amen be seated if you will great singing tonight wonderful testimonies just been a wonderful 
wonderful day. Let's pray and ask God's blessing on our giving tonight, all right? Father, we thank you for the privilege that's ours to give, and thank you, Lord, for how much you've given for us. And I pray you'd accept the gifts we give back to you tonight, your tithe and our offering, and Lord, you know the needs that are, that are present, the needs that we have. This is your work. And Lord, I pray you'd provide for your work through your people and bless the giving tonight. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. you take your Bibles this evening for our scripture reading and go to Malachi chapter 3. Malachi is the last book of the Old Testament. <clears throat> so if you get to Matthew and take a left, you'll find Malachi. It looks, looks like Malachi, but it's Malachi. Malachi 3, and uh, we are going to read verses 14 through 18. We'll read it responsively as we normally do, and as we usually do, let's stand together to read the Scripture. All of us standing, we'll begin together on verse 14, and I'll read 15. We'll alternate until we end together on verse 18. Let's start in verse 14 of Malachi chapter 3. Ready? Ye have said, It is vain to serve God. And what profit is it that we have kept his ordinance and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? And now we call the proud happy. Yea, they that work wickedness are set up. Yea, they that tempt God are even delivered. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. Father, add your blessing to the reading of the Scripture now this evening. We thank you, Lord, for just a wonderful time together here this evening. Thank you, Lord, for the wonderful songs and the people singing to you. Lord, thank you for these wonderful testimonies tonight of your goodness and your grace. And, Lord, we're, what, what you did yesterday in our midst and we're just grateful that we got to be a part of that. And Lord, I'm asking you now that you would meet with us in these next few minutes as we open up your word. You would once again honor and bless the preaching of the word of God. I understand that folks are weary this evening and there's a lot of tired people in this room. And I pray, Lord, you'd help each of us to be alive to the things of God. That We would be sensitive to what the Spirit would want to say to us tonight. And may we find encouragement and help from the message this evening. It's in Christ's name I ask it. Amen. All right, you may be seated. The people of Israel had been going through the motions of loving and serving God, but their heart was far from Him. 
they, they were doing a lot of things they were supposed to do, but their heart wasn't in it. And by the way, God always is looking at our heart. Uh, man cannot see the heart, but God always sees the heart. Uh, we don't know. You, you may look at somebody and say, well, I know why they're doing that. No, you don't have any idea. Uh, you think you know why they're doing it, but your heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, and you can't know your own heart, let alone the heart of anybody else. All we can tell is the outside, but God sees the inside as well. And so God heard their words, and He saw their actions, and He knew their heart was far from Him. They'd taken pagan wives. They've held back the tithe and the offering from Him. And there was no blessing on their life. In fact, you find earlier in the chapter, there's not a blessing. There was a curse upon their life. God said, you're cursed with a curse. And He has cursed their life and not poured out any blessing on them at all. In fact, verse number 13 says, Your words have been stout against me, saith the Lord. And yet again, they said, well, what have we spoken so much against thee? And, and they, were, they were talking bad about God and, and bad-mouthing the Lord. And by the way, you can get that way in your life. And folks can backslide to where they begin to talk bad about God. Uh, you see, they, they were still doing everything outwardly, but inwardly their heart wasn't right. And by the way, when your heart's not right, your mouth won't be right. Because it's out of the abundance of the... A heart that the mouth speaks. And so it'll, it'll come out in, bad, in, in a bad way. They were two-faced. They were hypocrites. And, and they're one way with their actions, but another way with their words. But the Bible reminds us in Psalm 139, David said, There's not a word in my tongue, O Lord, but Thou knowest it altogether. God knows your thoughts afar off. Uh, the devil cannot read your mind, but God certainly can. And God knows everything. And so God understands your thoughts as well as our words. Their, their view of life was all out of perspective. In verse 14, they, they, they were saying, It's vain to serve God. What profit is it that we kept His ordinance, that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? In fact, verse 15 says, They were calling the proud happy. They were saying those that work wickedness are set up, and they that tempt God are even delivered. They, they, they said, man, it's useless to serve God. What reward is that? We don't get anything from that. See, they had a, they had a very me-centered view of what life was all about. And by the way, we're living in that day now, too. It's all about what can God do for me? Uh, what's God done for me lately? And it's all centered on God doing something for me. Hey, I'm thankful we still have some folks who want to do something for God and, and want to live their life for Him and want to make sure that we're doing, that He's getting glory from our life and that we're wanting to glorify Him. So I'm not going to talk about those people tonight, all right? But that's the one group of people. But there's another group of people that we're going to focus on, all right? Notice, this, that's that group. Now, verse 16, the Bible says there's another group. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. He said, in, in the midst of the compromise, in the midst of the worldly values, in the midst of lukewarmness and indifference and apostasy and backsliding, there was a group of people that feared the Lord. There was a group of people that thought upon his name and dwelled upon Him. And you know what God said? Look at verse 17. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels. God, you know what God called those people? He said, they're my jewels. They're my, they're my precious treasure. And He says, they're going to be mine when I make up my jewels. I'll spare them as a man spareth his own son who serveth him. And now, now two things about these folks. Number one, the Bible says they feared the Lord. They feared the Lord. The first group obviously did not, the ones we talked about. Uh, there was no fear of God in their eyes. But the Bible says quite a bit about the fear of the Lord. Will you leave your uh, paper? or uh, don't leave, I was going to say leave a finger there, but don't leave a finger there. Leave a piece of paper there or something. And um, let, let's uh, look over in the book of, of Proverbs. Would you turn there, please? Proverbs. Notice Proverbs. Let's start in chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1. And notice with me verse number 7. 
where the Bible teaches us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Here the Bible says the, the, the first step of learning, the first step of knowledge has to be the fear of the Lord. Uh, by the way, that's a, that's a good um, a case made right there and principle made right there for a Christian education, is it not? Uh, you have to start with the fear of the Lord or you're not going to get the knowledge you need to have. And so the fear of the Lord begins uh, the, the, of knowledge and uh, that fools will despise wisdom and instruction. But let's move over to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs 3. Notice verse number 7. Be not wise in thine own eyes. What should you do? Fear the Lord and depart from evil. If, if you'll fear the Lord. By the way, one of the things that will keep you from fearing the Lord is if you're wise in your own eyes. Uh, you, you, you think you know it all what do I need God for uh, don't rely trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto thine own understanding so you don't, don't rely on what you know rely, on what, rely upon what God says and he says the fear of the Lord uh, is to depart from evil let's look on uh, in Proverbs chapter 8 Proverbs chapter 8 notice with me if you will verse number 13 here he, he gives us a little more description about what the fear of the Lord is. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the froward mouth do I hate. Fear of the Lord is hating these things. In other words, when I fear the Lord, I'll hate what God hates. I'll, I'll, I'll have the same opinion of things that God has about things. I'll, I'll line up where God lines up. And, and I have to hate the things that God hates and think evil of the things that God would think evil of. Let's continue to Proverbs chapter 14. Proverbs chapter 14. Notice with me verse number 16. It's a wise man, a wise man feareth and departeth from evil, but the fool rageth and is confident. And again, here's a wise man. And what, how do we know, what do we know about a wise man? He'll fear and he'll depart from evil. It's the fear of the Lord that will cause us to hate the evil. All right? We'll agree with what God says. He's saying these people, these people who are going to make up my jewels, the characteristic was they feared the Lord. They feared the Lord. They had a healthy fear of God. And it, it, it presents itself in a hatred of evil. When I fear the Lord, I'm in awe of the Lord. When I fear the Lord, it means I'm in submission to the Lord. When I fear the Lord, it means I'm yielded to His leadership and His control in my life. When I fear the Lord, it means I agree with God when it comes to sin. When I fear the Lord, it means I have a deep respect for the character and the holiness of God and who God is and what God is. When I fear the Lord, it'll show in my tongue and how I speak and it'll show in my life how I conduct myself. It'll show in my service and my obedience to God and my humility to fear God and not man. The Bible says it's the fear of man that'll bring a snare. Uh, it'll be a trap. Uh, don't, don't, don't fear what man can do. Fear him that's able, Jesus said we need to fear him that's able to destroy both body and soul in hell. And that's only God. Only God's able to do that. And we need to have a healthy fear of God. And so they feared the Lord. But then secondly, notice what else they did. The Bible says in Malachi, they thought upon His name. They thought upon His name. And I would submit to you, you can't really think upon the name of God without meditating in His Word. You cannot think upon God without thinking upon the book by which He's chosen to reveal Himself to us. Uh, how do we know who God is? How do we know what His attributes are? How do we know how He behaves? How do we know He loves us? Well, God wrote us a book. See, I'm so glad that my Father in Heaven tells of His love in the book He has given. Wonderful things in the Bible I see, but this is the dearest, that Jesus loves me. And that's because of the Word of God. And so we have to meditate in His Word. In Psalm 1, the, the happy man, the blessed man, is the one who not only will walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful, but he will delight himself in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. He'll be thinking on the Word of God. He'll be thinking on God and thinking on the things of God. And so, while others may forsake the Word, I'll still want to feast on the Word. 
And while others may want to uh, have left the Word of God, I want to cleave to the Word of God. Others may change the Word of God, but I want to love the Word of God. I want to stay with the book. I want to dwell on the majesty of God, and I want to dwell on the holiness of God, and I would like to dwell on the righteousness of God, and I want to dwell on the greatness of God, and I want to dwell on the power of God, and I want to dwell on the might of God. I want to dwell on the knowledge of God. I want to dwell on the wisdom of God, and I want to dwell on the mercy of God, and I want to dwell on the truth of God. I want to dwell on the forgiveness of God, and I want to dwell on the love of God. I want to dwell on the return of Christ to the earth. I want to dwell on all that God is. And when I do that, I'll fear Him more. And I'll, I'll honor Him more. And it's out of my abundance of the heart, my mouth will speak. Oh, I'm saying, when you do those things, you'll talk about Jesus. So many times, it's so easy. It seems like you say, why is it so easy to talk about everything else? And it seems so difficult to talk about uh, God and the things of God. Listen, People talk about what's in their heart. And when, when your heart is full of God and your heart is full of the Word of God, you, you won't help but talk about Jesus. You won't help but talk about the things of God. Let's talk about Jesus. Amen? And so, I want to keep company with those kind of people. That's, that's my crowd. That's who I want to be around. Is the people that fear Him and that think upon His name. Now you say, well, preacher, what difference does it make? What difference does it make? You know what the difference is? God is keeping a book. He says in Malachi 3, verse number 16, They that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before Him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. There's a book of remembrance. It says, has God heard these men? As he watched them fear him and talk about him, God's ears perked up. And God said, wait a minute. They're talking about me. You ever, you ever uh, go past somebody or hear your name mentioned? Huh? And all of a sudden you say, wait a minute. I think I heard my name mentioned. And, and all of a sudden your ears perk up and you say, man, I better, I better hear this. Huh? What are they saying? Well, God's ears perked up, and he says, hey, they're talking about me. The Bible says the Lord hearkened, and he heard it. And he listened to those who were talking about him. Can I remind you tonight, church, that every word we say for the Lord, he hears and he remembers. Every time you said God loves you to somebody yesterday, God heard that, and he remembers that. Can I remind you that every drink of water in his name, uh, he remembers that? All of that is recorded in His book. Every person that you clothe who's naked, God says, I remember that. I record that in my book. Every visit in His name is recorded in His book of remembrance. I believe every flyer that you passed out for the last two weeks is recorded uh, in His book of remembrance. Every box that you carried in and out of the shed or in and out of the fellowship hall uh, he, is, is His book of remembrance. Every part that was put on and taken off the bus is in his book of remembrance. Amen. Uh, Brother Don, you can't remember everything that came on and off, but God remembers all that, and he knows, and he knows what every mile driven on the bus, every scraped knuckle uh, that, that came from working on that bus, he knows. He, he recorded it in his book. Every sign that was made, every donation that was sought, every dart that was picked up off the ground, uh, every bean bag, every softball, every basketball, every milk can, every time you bent over, God watched and God took note and God was, God was aware of what was happening and He put that in His book of remembrance. Every time you put a can of pop into the ice and, and, and every time you picked up a bag of ice, all 93 of them, uh, God was taking note. Every flag that was put out front, every car that was parked, even cars that we had to get off the Kirk Williams lawn. Uh, we had to uh, say, hey, you know what? We don't own that building. Don't park in their grass, all right? And uh, help them out over there. But every car that was parked and those who helped people feel at home, listen, every phone call that was taken, 
God was making a note of it. God was recording that in his book of remembrance. Every child that was cared for, every prize that was given out, the sound system as it was set up, and, and, and the inflatables, and, and the games, and the prizes, every bag of popcorn that was filled, every bag of cotton candy that was filled, uh, every snow cone that was made, every time that left arm came down, Nikki. Every, I was watching him, I said, man, they had the, it's a wonder her left arm isn't like, you know, her, huge and uh it was unbelievable i wonder if you could have turned it around the other way and used the right arm a little bit you know what i mean i don't know if that works it must have been a left-handed snow cone maker right and uh we uh, every one of those and listen god takes note hey bus worker god has a book of remembrance every bus driver god has a book of remembrance you understand the uh, brother bill and brother brett and those guys you know what they got to do at the fair nothing they, they ran the bus all day long, just back and forth, getting people here, getting them off. And, and, and we, we got to at least see the people and enjoy. They, they got people on the bus. That's all they got. And that's good. That's enough, I guess, for them. But it was, uh, they, they just did that. But you know what? God took note of that. God takes note of that. And he watches everyone who knelt and prayed uh, and asked God to bless the fair day. Uh, every trash picker-upper. Uh, everybody who carried a table, everybody who dried and folded the chairs after the shower at 3.30, uh, everybody who put away the canopies, uh, everybody who picked up litter and swept and set up the fellowship hall after it was all clean, say, hey, we got to get, we have children's church in here tomorrow, we got to set up for children's church. And folks stayed and got everything ready for this morning. Uh, listen, God takes note of that. God has a book of remembrance. And I guarantee you, he, he took note of what was done in his name and what was done for his honor and his glory. God says, them that honor me, I will honor. Oh, I'm so thankful. I'm just thankful that I get to pastor people like that. That's a great blessing. Thank you for being some, some people that just say, you know what? You can take the world. I'll have Jesus. I'll take Jesus. Don't, don't ever, whenever you serve God, don't ever let the devil get on your shoulder and say, well, nobody recognized you. Don't ever let him whisper in your ear, well, they didn't mention your name. Don't ever let him get on your ear and say, well, nobody told you thank you. Whenever that happens, you just say, hey, listen to me, smutty face. God has a book of remembrance. God's keeping track of what's going on. And, and one day, he'll, all I want to hear is, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Because those who think of Him and those who talk of Him will never be forgotten. God keeps track of all that. And God won't forget. God won't forget. He'll reward you. The longer I serve Him, the sweeter He grows. The more that I love Him, more love He bestows. Each day is like heaven, my heart overflows. The longer I serve Him, the sweeter He grows. Father, I bow before you tonight. My heart is somewhat overwhelmed. Thank you for allowing me to be in this place and pastor people who love you are willing to serve you with their life who are willing to fear you and to think upon your name Lord I pray that in a world that just seems to be caught up in everything but God and the things of God help us to fear you and to think upon your name Give us that passion and that desire to please you. And that whether we eat or drink or whatsoever we do, we'll do all to the glory of God. We love you. 
We thank you for the privilege it's ours to serve you. It sure is a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. We'll have our invitation in just a moment. And they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him. For them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. I wonder if you're tonight would say, Preacher, I needed to hear that truth this evening that God put in Malachi chapter 3. I'm thankful that God keeps track. I'm thankful that He takes note. And until Jesus comes back, I just want to fear Him think upon his name I'm not going to worry about recognition I'm not worried about anybody thinking I just want to know God knows Amen. preacher the spirit of God whispered to me tonight and just reminded me that's all that matters Amen. pastor pray for me this evening God did speak to my heart will you slip your hand up Christian Amen. say pray for me God bless you Amen Amen. that's good you may, be, you may put him down If anybody ought to be grateful tonight, it ought to be Bible Baptist Church. Take time to thank God for His goodness to us. We praised Him in testimony, and now we ought to thank Him in prayer. So the altar will be open for us to come and kneel and pray. It was such a wonderful time yesterday morning when we met at 9 o'clock and shared some thoughts from the Scripture, but it was really great when we just broke up into groups of two and three and just there was just prayer going up in the auditorium a sweet time so often we're guilty of asking and asking and asking and when God answers we don't spend a lot of time coming back to thank him and we ought to make sure we take some time to thank him tonight if there's any decision needs to be made then you see me and you want me to pray with you or if you are saved and never been baptized you ought to come and say preacher I need to be baptized Saved and baptized, not a member of a church. You ought to say, Preacher, I'd like to be a member of the church. Whatever it is God's dealing with your heart about, Christian, you just want to come, kneel at the altar and say, God, thank you for being our God, for giving us a wonderful day. Just thank him a little bit tonight. Father, we love you this evening. Thank you for meeting with us. Thank you for speaking to our hearts. Pray your will will be done now in these next few moments. As we respond to what you've spoken to our heart about tonight, we are grateful, God, for your blessing and your goodness to us. And I pray, Lord, you'd have your will and way now in this invitation. May each heart be doing and be yielded to you and do exactly what you're bidding them to do. And I'll thank you for it. With your heads bowed, you stand to your feet. As you stand to your feet, our pianist will play. As she plays, Bob's going to sing, and God has spoken to your heart. Let's come to the altar tonight. I started for the kingdom since my life he controlled. Since I gave my heart to Jesus along, I serve him the sweeter he grows. The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. The more that I love him, more love he bestows. Each day is like heaven, my heart overflows. The He grows Every need He is supplying Plenteous grace He 
bestowed every day my way gets brighter the longer I serve him the sweeter he grows the longer I serve him the sweeter he grows the more that I love him more love he bestows each day is like heaven my heart overflows the longer I serve him the sweeter he grows go ahead and be seated for a minute if you would getting Jason and Heather's name here just, I think we have most of their information just kind of get a card on them so we'll have that and get the details in later but most of you know was it uh, two two Sunday nights ago or three that Heather got saved two Sunday nights ago yeah it was May 3rd wasn't it yeah, it was May 3rd on Sunday night, and then uh, it was last Sunday night for you, wasn't it? You sure? Okay. May 10th. Well, this is only May 17th. So it was two and one. Yeah, May 3rd and May 10th. And uh, what did you say, Jason? What? 7.50 p.m., May 10th. All right. He even, he even got the time down, amen. Heather received Christ, and then last week Jason received Christ, and uh, we... They came, of course, yesterday and wanted to help at the fair and uh, helped out. And then uh, they talked to him afterwards about being baptized today, and they both wanted to be baptized. And so we're going to let them obey the Lord in baptism. Isn't that good? Amen. Amen. That's exciting. And uh, God's doing great things in this family, and uh, we're excited to see that. So listen, uh, you head on down, Brother Bob. Follow him, Jason, and Heather K. will take you, and uh, we'll get you ready to baptize this evening. Brother Bob will lead you in a song or two while we prepare to baptize. Amen. Well, I don't know if you uh, had the longer I serve him in your uh, book. It was page 13, but let's go back to page 12, right next door to it. He touched me. This is just a really great song. We don't really sing it much around here <clears throat> as a congregation, but uh, it's just a great song to sing. Let's sing that Shackled by a Heavy Burden together. Shackled by a heavy burden Neath the load of guilt and shame Second together. Since I met the blessed Savior, since He cleansed me, me whole. This should be real now. I will never cease to praise Him. Great. Brother Pete. 
488. Let's sing a verse of 488. <clears throat> a new name in glory. I was once a sinner, but I came. Oh, yes, it's mine. And the white road angels sing the story. A sinner has come home. For there's a new name. And it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. With my sins forgiven, I am bound for Eighty-nine. Eighty-nine. Mansion over the hilltop. All right. Let's sing that first stanza of I'm satisfied with just a cottage below. Eighty-nine. I'm satisfied with just a cottage below. A little silver and a little gold. I want a gold one, a silver line. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop. We'll never grow old, and someday more wonder but walk on streets that are pure as gold Amen, Nikki 272 I'm on the winning side you guys are going to have to really uh, pick up the uh, volume here because I'm losing it if you haven't, told, uh, haven't figured that out yet. <clears throat> Let's sing that first verse. If I'm on the winning side together, once I drifted out and sing. profession of your faith in Christ as your Savior and in obedience to his command, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, bearing the likeness of Jesus' death and raised in the likeness of Jesus' is Heather Weber. Heather, upon a public profession of your faith in Christ as your Savior and in obedience to his command, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, bearing the likeness of Jesus' death and raised in the likeness of his resurrection. Amen. 
And the servant said, Master, it has done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. Well, let's let them uh, get uh, situated there. We'll sing a couple more stanzas real quick. Mrs. Van Gelder. Number 11. He is mine, is that right? Number 11. Long before the fall of man, God designed a master plan. He is mine. Long before the fall of man, God designed a master plan. The sinless one Jesus left his throne on high Came to earth to bleed and die He said, Father, not my will But thine be done He is mine He That's good. Let's have another one. Leanne? Number three. <laughs> Number three. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. That's great. All right. Any other favorites? Sorry, page 10? Page 10. I have decided to follow Jesus. Let's sing that first together. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided. turning back no turning back though no one join me though no one join me still I will follow though no one join me still I will follow though no one join me Still I will follow No turning back No turning back The world behind me The world behind me The cross before me The world behind me The cross before me Behind me, the cross before me, no turning back, no turning back. Hey Amen. That's great, isn't it? Wonderful day, wonderful weekend, and uh, great, uh, great to be a Christian. All right, thank you for your patience tonight and uh we're gonna hopefully get uh heather and jason so they can be in the back and you can congratulate them on your way out Amen. hopefully they'll be coming up and uh let's stand together and we'll have a word of prayer all right heavenly father we thank you for 
your goodness to us. Sure has been a wonderful Lord's Day, wonderful Saturday, as well as a wonderful day today. Lord, I thank you for Jason and for Heather and what you're doing in their lives. And I pray you continue to, to bless them and they would continue to desire to want to do what you want them to do with their life. And Lord, I pray that we'll be the kind of church family that they need and we'll encourage them and help them along the way. Lord, thank you now for each one who labored so diligently throughout this weekend. And I pray you'd help all the servants, Lord, to sleep well this evening. Give it, multiply those hours of sleep and refresh the body. And Lord, help us to be back about your business as we wake up in the morning. Lord, we pray for these follow-up visits that we'll make, that you'll prepare the hearts of people that we'll go to visit. And Lord, that uh, we'll see many more come to know you as their Savior as a result of what took place yesterday. Thank you again for a wonderful day, God. We love you. We're so thankful that you're our God. Dismiss us now with your care and make us mindful that you go with us from this place. Make us aware of your presence. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. Let's sing it together. Uh, it's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. It's a grand thing to follow Jesus anywhere and everywhere I go for. It's a grand thing to be a soldier in his army here below. It's the grandest thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. God bless you. You're dismissed. Jason and Heather are back there. Make sure you welcome them. <laughs>